As I say the name, Mihari as a hero, it's likely that the first thing that comes to mind is the melted canvas sneaker. And although it's definitely an intriguing pair of footwear, it only makes up just a sliver of Yasuhiro's artillery as a designer who is so much more than that. Yasuhiro Mihara was born on June 15th of 1972 in Kyushu Island, Western Japan, to a father who was a chicken researcher and a mother who was a painter. Now whilst his dad's occupation is likely irrelevant, his mother's is definitely of importance. As a child, Yasuhiro would often visit museums with his mother, by which point he already knew he wanted to work in the art industry, saying that although he enjoys fine art now, his childhood experiences will always leave an impact on him. And it's clear through Mihara's work that he's carried these childhood memories into what he does now. By 1993, at 21 years old, Yasuhiro entered the Tama Art Design Department as an undergraduate. This university was actually the same in which fellow Japanese designer Issey Miyake attended many years earlier. In the early stages of his time at university, Yasuhiro discovered an enthusiasm for footwear, which he developed through exploring wooden last ateliers and leather workshops during a foreign exchange trip to the United Kingdom. By the time Yasuhiro got back to Tokyo, he only had one thing on his mind, and that was making shoes. At first, Mihara didn't know anything about the craft, saying in an interview with Hype Beast that he simply brought some leather back home and started tailoring it according to the shape of his foot, with no knowledge of shoe loss or how to make a rounded shoe tip, and so he made something sock-like. But day by day, he grew his skills, and in such dedication to the craft, he would sneak into shoe factories, watching the factory workers so he could learn the skills by heart. Yasuhiro says that he only started making shoes as art, but it became a fashion trend and that's pretty much how business started. By 1996, Mihara launched his own brand, Arki Doom, supported by a shoe manufacturer in Japan. One year on, Mihara graduated from university and decided to rename Arki Doom, birthing the eponymous label, Mihari as a hero. Initially, the label was sold through numerous independently operated stores named Sosu Mihari as a hero, the first of which opening in 1998 in Aoyama, Tokyo. The word Sosu translating from Korean as prime number, and was named this because it has no regularity and lasts forever, much like the garments made by Mihari as a hero. In 1998, at a time where fashion collaborations weren't really a thing, Mihara decided to make a call to sportswear brand Puma, telling them that he was learning to design shoes, although only had experience working with leather footwear. Yasuhiro then made the audacious act of telling Puma that he would like to design sneakers for them, but not just as a normal designer, he wanted to have his name on Puma, he wanted to be a part of the release. This was undoubtedly a big ask from the Japanese designer, but one that would completely turn around his career forever. By the final year of the millennium, Yasuhiro's work with Puma was finally ready to go live, with the young designer bursting onto the scene as he revitalised Puma classics through the use of parts such as studs, metallics and fur. Yasuhiro began to progress astronomically, going on to design apparel for the brand, and in that same year, he debuted his own line entirely through numerous exclusive drops in Japan. This particular line would be titled Puma by Mihari Yasuhiro. Yasuhiro's progress was incredible, but the freedom that Puma gave him as such an inexperienced designer simply cannot be ignored, with Yasuhiro saying that the only thing they imposed was a deadline. They left the work completely up to him, not even giving suggestions. By 2001, it was more than evident that Puma's decision not to impose constraints on Yasuhiro had absolutely paid off. Yasuhiro's unorthodox designs had rose to popularity, with the collaboration now available at top tier accounts worldwide. Now I think it's important we go back two years earlier to 1999. While starting to work on his collab with Puma, Yasuhiro began to expand his namesake label to more than just footwear. Stating that through both curiosity and necessity, he began to slowly merge into menswear. Much like most other designers, when designing footwear, Yasuhiro would think about the rest of the outfit too. And so through almost accident, Yasuhiro began to work on the rest of the pieces as well. Also, as the brand grew, the demand did too, and soon it became an inevitability for the brand to add additional product. Then, finally, Mihari Asahiro placed his inaugural clothing collection at Tokyo Fashion Week in November of 1999, ultimately starting the beginnings of a bigger future for Mihari Asahiro.
By the 2000s, Mihara's work for his own brand started to build traction, just as his work with Puma did. His runway shows brought the same ambience of flamboyance and irrationale as his footwear did, in ways that only Yasuhiro could provoke. Take for example his Autumn Winter 2004 collection, which combined an abandoned bowling alley, Tokyo Tower and giant video screens with one eyeball each projected above the catwalk. Following further success overseas with his Puma collaboration, it was clear that Yasuhiro had to do the same with his own label, although this wasn't actually Yasuhiro's idea, with the Japanese designer saying he was almost forced to do so, because back then, although Puma by Mihari Yasuhiro was popular, Mihari Yasuhiro itself wasn't that well known. The lack of social media and internet meant lack of information on Mihari Yasuhiro too, with the designer getting a report back from Puma that said many actually thought Mihari Yasuhiro was a girl, a kind of food, or representation. Essentially, anything but a male designer. Basically, he was told by Puma that he had to go overseas so that people would know his name. Subsequently, Mihara decided that he had to go abroad, and thanks to the signing of an overseas licensing deal with Karada, the designer landed his first international accounts. And in June of 2004, Mihari Asahiro was shown for the first time outside Tokyo and Milan's spring-summer 2005 shows. Up until this point, Mihara's collections would usually consist of garments that were mostly oversized and either distressed, reconstructed, or otherwise just uncanny. But for his first collection abroad, Yasuhiro drove in an entirely different direction, presenting a classically tailored yet rough take on traditional menswear, consisting of lots of layers, treated fade prints, plaid pajama suits, and denim waist dress pants. This ultimately was the perfect move for Mihara to play bursting onto the European menswear scene as a turbulent yet ingenious Japanese designer. Two years on came what in my opinion is undoubtedly Yasuhiro's most iconic runway show. For his autumn winter 2007 show in Milan, Yasuhiro decided to collaborate with Japanese tap dancer Kazunori Kumagai, who had tap danced as a shadow throughout the entirety of the show. Now for some of you, this idea of a tap dancer at a runway show may ring a bell, and that's likely because 14 years later, for the Off-White Autumn Winter 2020 show, Virgil decided to do the exact same thing. Now I must say, this is definitely not to throw shade at Virgil, and it's very possible that he didn't actually get the idea from Mahara. But it's just saddening to see the modern designer get such coverage for something that was done years earlier by a smaller designer who received far less attention. This was also the same collection that featured the iconic mummy jackets and trousers. Yasuhiro carried form on fantastically that year, and for his next show, the Spring-Summer 2007 collection, he collaborated with jazz pianist Hiromi Uhara. This would be the first time he'd meet his future wife, as just over a year later, the two got married. Mahara's latter half of the decade was a success, but the next 10 years were to be even better. Starting off the decade with two of his most critically acclaimed shows, Spring-Summer 2011 and Spring-Summer 2012. For 2011, he played up to the part of a Japanese designer obsessing and referencing some sort of American culture, with Mahara opting to draw inspiration from Henry David Thoreau's Walden or Life in the Woods, to produce what was described by Vogue's Tim Blanks as a show that combined quietly poetic outfits, rare feats of fabric technology, and some of the most jaw-dropping visual effects yet seen in the fashion context. Then, a year on, Mihara chose not to present his next collection on the runway, but instead at a showroom presentation. The Japanese designer took a chunk from one of his favourite songs, Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd, to reference his family stranded by the earthquake and tsunami, printing the lyrics in bold caps across many of the garments. Also, in further touching sentiment, all the money made from the show was donated to charities supporting those directly affected by the earthquakes and tsunami in Japan. I think this is a great example of just how sincere Mihara actually is. It's very easy for a brand to make a single post to a cause, or drop a couple t-shirts with a slogan maybe, but to devote an entire collection and donate all the income to the cause is something else entirely. By May of 2014, Mihara was ready for another high level fashion collaboration. Now it's important we note that Mihara has gone on record to say he thinks that nowadays everyone collaborates with everyone, going from one to another with everybody blindly following the next trend. Also, up until this point, Mihara was only really collaborating with Puma, despite the fact that he could definitely have worked elsewhere. 
and collaborating with Montclair as a brand that originally started out supplying coats to mountain climbers does seem rather random. And so I think it's fair to say that this was a very genuine collaboration, one that Mahara honestly cared for and not a sort of trend hopping collaboration that Mahara speaks so lowly of. It should also be noted that despite the fact that almost every runway show for his eponymous label was menswear and rarely ever singly women's wear, Montclair still brought him in for the brand's autumn winter 2015 women's wear collection, which would be called Montclair Y by Mihari as a hero. For this collection, Mihara stayed true to his colours, producing military style garments Ali as a hero, but in the manner of a slim, long proportioned feminine silhouette. In his own words, a world midway between man and woman. The following year, Mihara parted ways with Puma, perhaps to allow further focus for his own label, which in 2017 was rebranded as Maison Mihara as a hero. Along with the rebranding, Mihara was about to encounter uncharted attention, from what is undoubtedly the brand's modern day staple, the melted canvas sneaker, or to what is for many, the melted converse. Which isn't really the worst nickname, because, well, they clearly do reminisce that of a Converse sneaker, and also, the All-Stars were the designer's favourite sneaker as a kid. Now, despite the fact that many fans of Mahara do deem it unfortunate that this particular shoe overshadows the most of the designer's pieces and collections, and I definitely do agree, I think we must remember that some of Mahara's earlier steps as a designer were reimaginations of original Puma staples, and that's what really kickstarted his career. So the fact that the melted canvas sneaker has become so popular almost brings a sense of underrated nostalgia. Alongside this, Mihara has seemingly been busier than ever, or at least on a public scale. In 2017, we saw the emergence of his first diffusion line, Mine, which is focused on music culture and the merge of streetwear and sportswear. Then, that same year, he launched his second in Fit Mihara as a Hero which produces garments that show elegance while still attending to the detail of silhouettes and materials. As well as this, Mihara has been involved in more collabs than ever, but yet is still clearly sticking to the philosophies and morals he mentioned in the past. In regards to his main line, Mihara has made an intriguing habit of producing videos for his collections that feel almost like a modern music video or a mini movie. The future of Mihari as a hero, like any designer, is of course uncertain. And in recent years, although he has gained a lot more popularity through his sneakers, I do hope that the future brings his runway shows and pieces the attention they deserve. Although I do feel Mihara might not actually want that. I also think that the fact that he's collaborating a lot more often is a good sign, as I'd certainly love to see how he take on some projects for other brands and fashion houses. Overall, Mihari as a hero is a greatly underrated creative, who through thick and thin sticks to the philosophies he originally built on, and most certainly has produced some incredible runway shows and garments alongside it. Now finally, I must say that we do have some very rare pieces from Mihara's archive available in our store for purchase or rent. My personal favourite being this reconstructed military jacket from the early 2000s, which sees two military staples brought together to form something of an unconventional conventional piece, with the base of a military liner jacket buttoned to a classic combat shirt which is used to fill the in-between of the garment and can be detached if need be. Thank you all for watching, if you liked what you saw today, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, sharing via Instagram stories or TikTok is massively appreciated and helpful for the channel.